Hi friends, host Eric here to talk about famous people and I am hopeful that this video will come out with decent audio. I would like to revisit the topic of creation, extroverted intuition, introverted intuition, the nation, nature of creational processes and making challenges associated with that and other such topics that I covered in an earlier car video somewhat but I want to re recover for a couple of reasons one being that the audio on that one wasn't very good but another it's just it's not even that I'm recovering it there's just a lot to talk about regarding this and it's something that's obviously close to my heart as somebody who makes a lot of stuff of uh, varying qualities so I mean I think that's a good place to start is if you are somebody who makes stuff or has creative aspirations or is intermittently creative and doesn't quite understand how to self-conceive in that regard uh, come on in the water form you know this is a standard operating procedure for creative types so to speak that there's a lot of conflicted self implicit in that process and the reason is because whenever you make anything you're doing two different things concurrently you're expressing yourself your particular self and you are creating an object distinct from the self that presumably lives and dies on its own merits so the clearest example of this or a clear explication of it, I guess would be a better way to say it, is think about famous songs that you're familiar with. Some of them you might know the songwriter's name, some of them you don't. You don't think of them as expressions of some particular person. The more famous the song, the less you think of it as that way. And the more you think of it as independent from any rendition of it. Christmas songs are of that sort. Uh, those would be an example of how those creators created something that is detached from them and exists outside of them and has its own life, so to speak. On the other hand, there are plenty of examples of, of art that are really more clearly reflections of the person who made them. So, uh, you know, Eminem comes to mind as somebody whose works are, are examples of him externalizing, externally actualizing. And that the universals implicit in them are there, uh, but it's hard to imagine, it's hard to imagine it being an expression of anybody but him. Some of the other of his songs may be less less like that, you know. Uh, but in general, I mean, rap is is more an expression of the individual usually. It doesn't have to be though, as we see when when people make songs that have little rap sections and they seem implied by the song and not so much an expression of the individual. Regardless, that's that's challenge number one in the creative process is, is understanding that you're doing both things. You may do, be doing the art as a prioritization of one or the other. If your goal is to be great in some regard or to make something mind-blowing that everybody just goes, wow, you're a genius, then you're really aspiring to that universal thing where you're saying, this isn't, I'm not trying to express myself, I'm trying to uh, create a, an archetypal work that resonates with people across time and space. You know, the reason Mozart songs are still known today and played today and end up in soundtracks and stuff is because they're ultra compelling. They exist and maintain their uh, legitimacy across time in a way that not all such things do. Um, there's a challenge to 
balance, you might say, uh, extroverted and inter introverted intuition as elements. So if something is too obvious, not interesting enough, then it may be that it hits on introverted intuition levels, but not on extroverted intuition levels. And if something's too, you might say like, too non-intuitive, too too constructed, too created, rather than discovered, then it's not going to have any legs. You know, it's like you can kind of get a sense of which, of which, uh, which hits are going to stand the test of time and which ones aren't, you know? I saw like Get Lucky by Daft Punk is a very well-constructed song. It exists as a song, not just as an exercise of stylistic accomplishment. And that's that's worth noting that one can be stylistically accomplished with extroverted intuition or any number of other sort of approaches to things, but that uh, a holistic attainment of entity status as a time object is reserved for things that that put it all together, one way or the other. But, regardless of what your intention is, whether it's to express yourself as some sort of self-growth thing, whether it's, you know, it calms you down, whether you, whatever it is you like to do, and whatever it is you deem it to be, you're necessarily going to have a lot of ego issues about it. Because, you're either falling short of that universal goal of that greatness you're aspiring towards, or you're not getting validated for your personal expression adequately, or something like that, uh, or you're hesitant to put it out there, you want to kind of hide for fear of being rejected or criticized. Those are all perfectly normal and expected parts of beginning to create meaningfully. If you want to say you don't care at all what people think, then, well, that's fine, but then don't expect people to bother to react to it, you know? And if, if you do care what people think and you want feedback, it can be for a number of reasons. One, because you want to be affirmed in what you're doing. That's okay. It doesn't have to be some sort of non-self-serving reason like that. And it could also be because you know that it's necessary to get... To, to, have, to hear a lot of feedback is a good way to develop artistically some better decision-making processes. Ultimately, making art is making decisions. When I say art, I mean just sort of any media object, whether it's some piece of uh, a video like this where I'm talking about a subject or whatever. It's it's still a an object that's concluded at the end when you're done making it, and that's what I mean by art, just some sort of time object. <laughs> uh, regardless, it's a decision-making process. I try to stay on topic here. I'm trying to say things that are relevant to people or meaningful or or interesting. I'm trying to keep talking at a steady pace and not go really slow. I'm trying not to repeat myself and I'm trying not to include a lot of filler words to the extent that I'm making a conscious effort to do those things. Well, you know, it's intermittently conscious, but it's well practiced at this point. I'm aware of the fact that I am hopefully to do something with this that involves audience members watching it. And in order to justify my asking anybody to watch something, I have to provide some value in exchange for their attention uh, of equal value at least, or else people won't give their attention. And it's, no matter what I do, not everybody's going to give their attention because people prioritize different manner of thing as uh, attentionally worthy. 
somebody who's not very ideationally active or interested in a bunch of abstractions about how shit goes down and what it means and all that kind of stuff probably isn't going to pay a lot of attention to this video because it's not relevant to them at all and that's totally fine so on that grounds again there's another sort of divisor that you have to utilize in understanding your media making processes which is it's some things will hit you know as close to universally as possible in other words that some things will appeal to just about everybody and that's a good thing but it's not inherently better than appealing more deeply to a narrower niche of viewers or listeners or whatever so I mean, I tend to think it's necessarily better in music to hit more broadly. It means you're, it's working better. But I don't necessarily think it's the case in other media. Like, I don't need this video to be um, optimized for maximal appreciability. I need, to, I need to feel as though it succeeds on, according to my, my metrics that are based on... I guess, compared against my other videos, first and foremost, but also, if I get certain kinds of feedback from certain kinds of people, or people I know, I've heard feedback before, and it's a certain kind of negative, or a certain kind of critical, then I'll, I'll get that I did one of a, a fairly finite number of things that I sometimes do wrong, wrong again. Sometimes I'm too arrogant, sometimes I'm uh, too dense, sometimes... It's, um, it's not topically set enough. I, I wander around too much, too diffuse in my explications. And there's, a lot, there's, there's a fair number of different things I do wrong in videos that make them less good than presumably they could be. Uh, one of them is simply uh, maybe there's just not enough inspired ideation. In it. It's usually not my problem because I'm an expert intuitor. But uh, I guess it depends on how inspired something has to be before you call it inspired ideation. I usually feel as though if I, if I talk through a topic successfully enough that I feel is, is like I've cleared out one of some random thoughts that I've been, I've been filling my head lately, that it's done that job at least. That I've, I have been thinking about some ideas that needed to get out of me and that they're somewhat different in some regard than the previous ideas. So, for this video, for example, I, I've been having the feeling that I'm growing in my understanding of what it means to create effectively, and also that I find myself wanting to talk about that process a little bit more. It's not something that people are generally terribly interested in, because, I mean, other creators might be. And even they are likely to say, well, I've got my own process. I'd rather create my own thing than watch your thing about how to create things. Or, uh, but, you know, this isn't exactly a how-to. So, I guess from a ontological perspective, as a person who's an identity, developing their own storylines while concurrently... Um, while concurrently creating them. If you find yourself believing in your own creative, the, the own value, the, the value or worth of your own creative enterprises, that you have something to say that needs to be said, that you got, that, you know, if people could really get a sense of what you're trying to express, or if you could express what you want to express correctly, that people would listen, that people would would validate it as a value. And then you start to produce such things, some sort of renderings of your various ideas, either songs or paintings or writings or whatever, and you don't get that you don't get any kind of response at all, maybe. Or you get people to tell you just, you know, stop that. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop making stuff. It's not good. You're not good. Stop acting as though anybody should pay attention to you. You're not special. You know, you get a lot of that shit from a lot of people, unavoidably. And, you know, you just gotta tell them all to go fuck themselves, frankly. The, the thing is, 
I had to give up before I could really have a chance to succeed, I think, in general. Um, but I didn't give up making stuff. I just gave up on the idea that I'd ever be successful. And I, I made videos and such under the explicit terms that this was for posterity, that I wasn't trying to uh, craft things for audience enjoyment or consumption purposes at all, just that it was, because I needed to, I needed to make it good, it had been such a long time since I really had, I, I made a lot back in the early 2000s, a lot of stuff, a lot of music, a lot of writing, a lot of web design, I mean, crazy website that no sane person would have made, but I, <laughs> you know, it was a process thing for me, I, oh, I wonder if I can do this, so I ended up with all kinds of different index pages, and just sort of like wandering around, and click links lead you to different places that have no central organizational scheme, there's no, I mean, it was any, you know, regardless, I tried really hard, I made a lot of shit, and I tried my best to become successful. And I guess Corey and I had some little success with our podcast review podcast. I had a little bits of sort of attention here and there. By and large, by my own standards, it was an abject failure. And I felt bitter. I felt let down by the world. Like, um, this is, the things I'm saying are smart, or this is the thing I wrote is, is great. Or this song I wrote is, is nice and nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. Well, I was right that nobody cared. But I was also right that there was a lot of great stuff being accomplished in all my makings. Not all of it. In respect, a lot of stuff I thought was great then, I think, is kind of crappy now. But, uh, the important thing is, I had attachment to comparisons against other people. Like, I needed to be better than this person, better than that person. Or, you know, I needed others to acknowledge that my thing was superior to this other thing. But, now I try not to do that. I try not to compare myself against other people. It's the best piece of advice I can give any maker, is make enough stuff that you can compare new stuff against the existing stuff you've made, and not against other people. Make a pile. A pile is always good advice in life, I think. I don't really talk about cognitive functions here at all. Let me just say this about about that. Uh, there's of quality in all human beings that is resonance. And people resonate with things that are made in different ways. People resonate with the person potentially. So maybe you like me because of, uh, I've been pleasant during this video or something. Or maybe you don't like me because I've been boring. Or maybe you have no feelings about me at all because I've been kind of dry. Other videos, maybe I display more emotion and uh, maybe you connect with me more. You see me as more real or authentic and therefore you, you value me more. Now, regardless, unless you're somebody I do know, then I don't know you at all, and you don't know me, but you still have an opinion about me, and uh, I don't have an opinion about you, because I don't even know who you are I'm talking about, right? But, um, that's the thing, is people resonate with works on a lot of different metrics, and it, it makes it impossible to come up with any sort of universal rules about it, really. It, it's just that when you're making a video, you're going to be judged on whether the content makes good sense, whether it conveys good information. You're going to be 
judged on whether you're pleasant to listen to, whether you go quickly enough, whether there's a lot of ums and ahs, and uh, you're going to be judged on whether you portray a self that's arrogant, presumptuous, and distinct, and some sort of has some sort of hierarchical advantage over the viewer or not, whether you do that. If you do do that, whether you do it with good epi or bad epi and stuff like that, there's lots of different factors that are going to evaluate. They're going to determine whether a given video is successful. Other things have different kinds of vectors to consider, though, and it really depends on the medium. If you're writing something like a screenplay, then it's not going to be about the likability of the screenplay writer that causes people to, to think that it's a good screenplay or not, right? It may have something to do with whether you get it read, but um, it's one of those things where you can evaluate the legitimacy of something more objectively because it doesn't have to consider a whole lot of uh, the maker at all to make a judgment about it. So, I'm kind of rambly here, but uh, I'm happy to have gotten all these words out of me, and I may end up making a video out of this.